Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about those three cardboard boxes or more precisely the filters that are inside those cardboard boxes. These filters are basically hydrogen alpha, sulfur 2 and oxygen 3 narrowband filters that are used for typically monochrome cameras in this case, and they can capture very precisely the wavelengths of interest from emission nebulae and planetary nebulae. It is great for light polluted cities like here in Tokyo, and it, it makes imaging in the city like much more possible than it would be otherwise. And what is so special about those filters is that they do have on paper excellent specifications with a full width half max or basically the how narrow the bandpass is with narrower being better because it rejects more light pollution while still accepting all of the target signal. And that bandpass is five nanometers, which is actually really narrow, not as narrow as like three nanometers, which is the maximum or even 2.5 nanometers, which is the the the, the narrowest I've seen in like filters that are advertised to us in the in the hobby, but still really good. And in particular for hydrogen alpha, it can be considered the sweet spot because it passes not only hydrogen alpha, but also the nearby uh, N2, which is good for planetary nebulae. Okay, but there are tons of sets of filters like that on the market. What is so special about this one? What is so special about this one is that with those specs, it retails for the full set at 350 US dollars might sound expensive, it actually isn't relative to other similar offerings. Uh, so 350 US dollars for the whole set, or if you buy a single one of them, 130 US dollars. Let's look at some of the competition. So this is like this SV Boni set. So 350 US dollars, something that would be very close in terms of advertised band passes, slightly narrower, would be this one from Antlia. And you can see, 870 US dollars, more than twice the price. And even if we look at, at less narrow band passes like this one, this, this Optolong SHO set, which is the same thing, but with 6.5 nanometers to 7 nanometer advent, advertised band passes, which is less good, uh, we still see a price of 670 US dollars. So pretty much twice the price of that SV Boni filter set. So that's where I'm like, this is completely crazy. Now, as background, I had first bought uh, a filter from SV Boni, which was a dual band narrowband filters with band passes of seven nanometers recently. And I had featured it on the channel. And, you know, my thought was that I was going to buy it. I was going to check the filter with my spectrophotometer. And then I would say it was completely out of spec, garbage, don't buy it. But the reverse happened. It was actually extremely good. It was up to spec. It was crazy cheap for what it was compared to the competition. And so I said it and I, I was almost reluctant to say that, but it was the perfect budget filter to get into dual band, narrow band astrophotography with color cameras. SV Boni, they watched that video and they contacted me separately. And so they sent me this set of three filters for free. So I get to keep it. So please be aware of that because it could potentially taint my review. Although my review will be basically two things. I will be checking the uh, filters with my uh, spectrophotometer, uh, which you know doesn't really lie. And also be uh, checking the filters on a very bright star to see if they cause any halos. Again, the presence or absence of halos is not really subjective. So I really have to use like quantitative quantitative data there. Oh, and by the way, I hadn't finished. There was another set of filters that I could be looking at, which was this batter CMOS optifi optimized 6.5 nanometers narrowband filter set. And that one is 760 US dollars. So again, more than twice the price of the SV Boni equivalent. So completely crazy stuff. So I mentioned the tests that I would be doing, checking the specifications of the filter with my spectrometer, and then checking those filters on a bright star. Because once you know the actual real specifications of the filters and they're measured with a spectrometer, you know how well they're going to perform in real life. Uh, and I want in summer to actually test those filters on nebulae, uh, but currently I don't really have access to nebulae that are really visible from Tokyo because it's the galaxy season. So you'll have to wait a little bit more for that. 
And also, I'll be testing those filters in summer with color cameras. They're not meant for that, but it's going to be an interesting experiment because there's a lot of people who always ask, like, hey, can you use those filters with color cameras? The answer is yes, but at what price? We'll be able to test that, but that's going to come up in a future video. So it's going to take a while. If you don't want to miss it, of course, you're free to subscribe to the channel. Click that bell icon. It really helps the channel out. And while you're there, you may like the video and leave a comment. Let us know what you think of such super budget filters. Do you own SV Boni filters or SV Boni equipment? What do you think of it? Let us know down in the comments. By the way, if you want to support the channel even further at no cost to you and you're planning on buying anything, including those filters from things like Amazon, Agena, High Point Scientific, or First Light Optics, if you do so after clicking the links that I have in the description, it actually helps the channel out at no cost to you. So that would be super appreciated. And of course, if you want to support me more and make the channel possible, you can join my Patreon as a member or join the channel as a member. So I have the link of the Patreon in the description and you have the join button next to the subscribe button. My Patreon supporters and channel members, they made this purchase of a spectrometer possible. I wouldn't have been able to do that if they hadn't been there. So thank you so much, guys. And this spectrometer, I exposed so many incorrect sp filter specifications thanks to it. So I think I saved a lot of people a lot of money. So there was a really great return of an investment on this thing, which cost 2000 euros. Of course, it's not a return on investment for me personally, but for the community as a whole, it was absolutely worth it. So to give a bit more information about the spectrometer and the way that I use it, uh, I, I use it together with uh, a broad spectrum lamp and I make sure to calibrate my spectrophotometer using a mercury argon lamp, which I also was able to buy thanks to my Patreon supporters and channel members. That thing costs 250 US dollars still, uh, but also a neon lamp and using both, I can calibrate the spectrophotometer extremely precisely before I do any measurements with it. Anyway, let's look at the results. These are the results. We have the in green, the oxygen three filter measured. In blue, we have the H alpha filter measured. And in red, we have the sulfur two uh, filter measured. As a reminder, the uh, specs are for hydrogen alpha, sulfur two and oxygen three. They advertise 90% transmission or more and they advertise five nanometer band passes. Basically, that's the summary of the specifications. So let's check them out. First, oxygen three. Let's look at the peak of oxygen three. It is precisely at 500.5 nanometers. We're trying to get 500.7 nanometers with oxygen three. So this thing is perfectly centered, which is really good. If I look at the transmission, we see 86% uh, roughly, uh, not quite 90% as advertised, but still very acceptable. It also should be noted that my spectrometer tends to undervalue this transmission and it undervalues those transmission even more the tighter the bandpass is. So realistically, we're more, we're closer probably to 88%, 89%. Uh, so it's still very close to the advertised value. So I'll give them a pass for now where I don't quite give a pass sorry, SV Boni, is the full width half max. If I check the full width half max, which is basically the, the width of the band pass at half of its tr transmission or, or halfway through the curve, I measured it actually at 6.5 nanometers rather than five nanometers. So here we have deviation from specifications, not as good as advertised. I, I almost feel relieved, right? Because at that price, I was, I, I would have been, it, it would have been crazy to find really perfect specifications. But okay, let's keep going because I'll, I'll have a word to say about that later on. Let's look at H alpha. So at the peak of H alpha, we are at 655.5 to 656 nanometers. We are targeting 656.3 nanometers, if I remember correctly. So it's around here, basically. So in between those, those two points here. So we are definitely towards the top of the curve, slightly towards the right. So it's not I ideal as it could be, but we're really, really close to per perfection there. It does mean that I probably wouldn't be using this filter uh, with scopes faster than maybe f3.5 roughly, because then you have a phenomenon called bandpass shift that can really cause issues. And you may want to stop down your optics, stuff like that. It gets a bit complex, but still, this is a very reasonable spec. Now, back to the bandpass. 
uh, the full width half max is actually around six nanometers rather than five for H alpha when I measured uh, measured it. So again, not perfectly five nanometer bandpass, worse than advertised. But let's keep going. Let's look at sulfur two. Sulfur two, we are targeting uh, 672 nanometers. And at the top, we are at 672 nanometers. So yeah, we are very well centered here to, here again. And we have a transmission of above 90%, which was all, also the case for H alpha, by the way. So very good transmission, very good centering. But again, when I measure the band pass, it is not really five nanometers, but closer to 6.5 nanometers. So we are extremely close to specs, but the band passes are slightly wider than expected. However, remember the prices we saw on similarly specced 6.5 nanometer bandpass filters from Optolong and Batter? Well, it was still twice the price. So even with this deviation from specs, those filters, at first glance, they look like one heck of a bargain. So still worth it. But keep in mind that in my measurement for this particular sample, I did not measure 5 nanometer bandpasses, but around 6 to 6.5 nanometers less good than expected, still crazy good for the price, but not up to spec. It also kind of uh, makes me relieved that uh, SV Boni doesn't seem to has, have sent me like a perfect pre-selected sample of filters that would be like absolutely perfect. So that's a kind of a relief at the same time for me. So if you really want tighter band passes, you may want to go with Antlia or Chroma, uh, both brands of whom I, I trust the specs having tested quite a few of those filters with my spectrometer but they they are they, they cost so much more also you know i'm comparing the prices of those sv boni filters with like optolong and batter but this makes the assumption that those optolong and batter band passes they are actually performing up to spec which isn't a given so yeah stuff to keep in mind there okay now we know how the specs look like overall pretty good but not quite up to spec but still for the price still incredible. Let's look at the uh, potential halos on stars. So I'm going to start here with H alpha. And you can see this is one hour of data. So 61 minute exposures on the very bright star Algeba, which is one of the brightest stars in the sky. Uh, yeah, there is definitely a halo uh, with a long in integration of like, let's say 10 hours, something like that, it would be extremely visible. So if you hate halos on your stars, this might not be the filter for you. That said, I'm using the filter in a filter drawer that is in between my coma corrector and my camera, because then it's easy to switch the filter. I'm told, and I haven't tested, that if you place the filter at the front of the coma corrector slash vocal reducer where there are threads for that, then that halo is no longer visible. Effectively, it's actually across the whole image, so it becomes negligible. But then it becomes really difficult to switch the filter, so I don't like doing that. So yeah, I think this is a good real-world example of how the, the halo will look like for H alpha. So you do get a halo, and that again, that relieves me because at that price, those things better have drawbacks because otherwise they would crush everything else. So yeah, they do have drawbacks. I'm relieved. Let's look at uh, sulfur two. Sulfur two surprisingly, does not seem to have any halo. It's just like a, a general fuzziness around, which is, I think, more the telescope than the actual uh, filter. This is perfect. So sulfur 2 might be a good buy if you were looking for a sulfur 2 filter that was relatively narrow at advertised 5 nanometer, in real life, apparently 6.5. And now let's look at Oxygen 3. And Oxygen 3, we see a very defined halo. Uh, Oxygen 3 is always the, uh, the, the most affected by halos. I, I'm not sure what's up with that, but it's something that I've seen countless times with multiple filter manufacturers. Like H-alpha and sulfur 2 don't really have halos, but Oxygen 3 has some crazy halo. And this is no exception. We see a crazy halo there. Again, if you mount the filter in front of the Kuma corrector slash focal reducer, uh, apparently you will not get a halo, but I haven't tested that. Uh, this is more for real life scenario where you have a filter drawer or filter wheel, because that's that makes more sense to me. And you get a crazy halo. So yeah, there, there is no free lunch. You get something really cheap for what it is compared to competition, but there are drawbacks with the band passes and with the halos. But yeah, overall, even with those drawbacks, this is, incredible value. I mean, really good for uh, the price. 
But if you don't like halos, these are not for you. And if you don't like being lied to, this, these are not for you. Uh, although still, I think they're they're still ex excellent value. And uh, yeah, other filter manufacturers lie to you. It's just you have no way of figuring it out. And that is why I bought the spectrometer with the equipment to be able to calibrate it. So what are your thoughts on this? Let me know down in the comments. Again, let me know if you own any SV Boni equipment. Maybe you even own those filters. What do you think of them? And you know, while you're going there, like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you're buying any equipment, use my links from the description. And if you want to support me even more, Patreon, Met Channel members, you guys make the channel possible as always. Thank you so much. I cannot thank you enough. But Besides that, as always, I hope this was interesting to you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget whenever you came to look up at the stars and I'll see you next time.